I have been on the Christian journey since I was a child of eight years old, and I hope you know that journey. That's in all likelihood why you are here, that God has changed my life in ways that I can't even understand or calculate, and it's a source of joy and meaning and grounding for my life. And, in fact, has called me to, to bear witness to that, to demonstrate the gospel, to declare the gospel with people in all kinds of settings over, over many, many years. Uh, and I hope you have had that same kind of blessing of being able to care for other people the way God has cared and nurtured you. Uh, most of us have some sense then as an individual that, that we have a mission. You know, we have a sense of calling. And we say the same thing about our congregations, that God has blessed us in order to be a blessing. Right? God has called us to be instruments of grace and peace and love uh, in the lives of the people that we touch and in our communities in particular. And that is absolutely central. That is absolutely central to, to being faithful, to live out that sense of calling and care. Uh, I want to use one story to essentially demonstrate uh, a way of thinking about that I think is, is meaningful. Uh, I grew up in a very small farming community in north central Texas called Ray's Mill. The Ray brothers had a mill. And then it was gone, and then there was a gin, and then the cotton gin burned, and there wasn't anything left except the general store and Ray's Mill Baptist Church. And it was a very nurturing kind of environment. Uh, we didn't get out much. You know, we were pretty simple uh, farmers, multiple generations. And, and because of the, 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 the church and, and God's presence was so central to us, it just felt like we were there at God's headquarters, you know, that God just really focused energy on us in a way that was powerful and intimate and life-shaping, and, and our whole life kind of revolved around that. And that's a, that's a wonderful blessing. Not everybody has that blessing, but to have that sense of, of God's care for you and intimate relationship is, is wonderful. Well, zooming ahead a few years, when I was in college, uh, I had the opportunity to be selected to be a part of a summer missionary program. Okay, ever heard of summer missions? Many of you can. It's not very difficult. You simply spend the summer working with missionaries wherever they are. Well, you know, as I say, in Ray's Mill, we didn't get out much. So as it turned out, I was actually selected to join the missionaries in Malaysia and Singapore. I did not know where Malaysia and Singapore was, actually. I looked it up on the map. But my first impression coming out of the, the small God is here kind of sensation was that this is what God was saying in that calling. Now remember, well not remember, I'll tell you, I was a telecommunications major, okay? So this is what I heard God saying in that call. Jim, go to Malaysia. Go to Singapore. Because I thought that's how God talked. And it was God, after all. And, and I was being sent from where I was. Go. That's good theology. You can find that in the Scripture. But as I prayed all spring to get ready, help me be ready, Lord. Help me be ready. Help me be ready. By the time it came to go, I realized that that's not all God was saying. The Spirit of the living God was also saying in the still, small voice, Come, come, join me where I have been work, at work from the beginning of time. You didn't even know where this place was. I know every person you'll ever experience there intimately. And I'm at work in their life. And I am honoring you. And I'm trusting you. And I'm counting on you to come and be a part of that. Well, I didn't know until many, many years later, there's a whole theology that's developed in the last two decades around that called missional theology. And it doesn't negate our sense of calling. It doesn't negate our centrality at the church of gathering and worshiping, preparing. But it does put a different twist on missions. Because historically, we kind of see the church as the central spot from which we go out and do missions, which is a good thing. But missional theology reminds us 
tries to keep us from forgetting that we're, we're not really the ones in charge, which can happen, you know, when you think I'm packaging all this good stuff that they need out there. I'm going to go do God's work like God wasn't even there. God is there inviting us. And when we use the term mission, really the theologically deepest way we could use that word is to understand it as God's mission. God is the one on mission inviting us to participate in what God is about. And that one framework in changing it around can make a huge difference. It can be overwhelming to think of what I need to do in order to help those people. These needs will, will kill you if you think this is your job to address everything. We still need to assess. We still need to care. We still need to pray. But God is the one about changing people's lives. And we're invited to do whatever it is that God calls us to do, which could be elaborate and it could be extraordinarily simple. Extraordinarily simple. So in the end, what the process probably looks most like is in our preparation, worship as our hearts are made to look for God and want to be a part of what God's doing and training and study and encouragement of one another, then to practice discernment. Discernment. The Spirit of God within us. Seeing what's going on. Looking for what, where God's Spirit is moving. Discernment. And then in a sense, sort of the missional prayer, if you will, is to say, Lord, what are you doing in Eduardo's life right now, and how do you want me to be a part? What, what are you doing in Roy's life right now, and how do you want me to be a part? What are you doing in Will's? Now, sometimes the Lord says, I got something pretty good going. I think you'd mess it up. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Just pray for him. Stay back. Sometimes it's, look, drop what you're doing. Draw your life alongside this person and pour into it whatever I will show you. Be prepared, but you don't have to worry that I'm not going to leave you alone. I will show you. I will show you. So when and if you draw your life alongside these folks in these schools, know that the Lord is there. The Lord is working in the life of that child, that teacher, that parent, whomever you are called to be a part of, and will show you what, <clears throat> what you need to do or not, to say or not, in order to be useful for what God is doing in that transformative process. There's a simple handout in your material that I would not uh, invite you to, to look at right now, but just know that I've tried to sketch out that and share a few uh, resources. But again, thank you for your willingness to say, here am I, send me, but be not anxious about whether you have all the answers. Be faithful to do whatever it is the Lord is prepared for you to do.